I'd like to invite and uh, invite all of you all to stand, but I'd first just like to thank all of you all for coming to the class of 2023's senior program. I am the class president, and the funny thing about voting is uh, every time it comes around, they literally ask for this. So everybody stand for prayer for me and uh, remain standing after um, prayer for our first song. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for this, for this college. Lord, I thank you for another day. Lord, I thank you for all the memories that we've had in these four years. Lord, I thank you for the relationships that we've built, the time spent, all the things that we've gotten to do. But most of all, I thank you for how much we've been able to grow in you. Lord, I thank you for each and every one that, that got to come out today. Lord, I just ask that you would be with all of us. May us be better because we've met with you because of this. Lord, be with us today, and uh, just give us a great time of celebration and fellowship. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Our first song is going to be in the hymnal, uh, 705, It Is Well With My Soul.
seated. Class of 2023, we've made it to the end. We are graduating. Only to name a few of our classes, we've graduated from Rinker, Reinhardt, and Ms. Parvin, most of us, Mr. Peterson, and Dr. A classes. We are graduating from our presence here at ABC. But I hope we remember, we aren't graduating from a life of service. We could say we have a whole life of PCS, learning and living like a responsible Christian. We aren't graduating from our involvement in the local church. And we aren't graduating from investing in relationships. We will be learning our whole lives, so please don't say I'm graduating from learning. But most importantly, we aren't graduating from our relationship to the word. That is the most important lesson God has taught me every single semester. As Dr. Rinker says, the quality of my relationship with God is measured by the quality of my daily relationship with his word. The quality of my relationship with God is measured by the quality of my, of my daily relationship with his word. Freshman and sophomore year, when life was everything except normal, my commitment to the word was essential. I couldn't grow spiritually if I wasn't disciplined by being in the word and being a doer of the word. Junior and senior year with the excitement of normal life, I was again reminded that my relationship to the word takes priority over any other relationship. If my relationship with God wasn't healthy, my relationship with others would be unhealthy as well. Now at the end of my senior year, as I anticipate the future, I must remember that everything I do revolves around my relationship to God. Soon to be a husband, a pastor, and eventually a father, my commitment to the word is my first priority. So class of 2023, we're graduating. We've been through so much together, and I'm gonna miss it like crazy. Pray for me, and then pray for each other. I can't imagine the pain I'd cause if I left the word to follow the world. So let's rejoice when we hear how we're being faithful and committed to the word in our lives. Let's stay faithful and steadfast in service. Class of 2023, we made it. Wow, four years. We walked in, four years seemed like hundreds of miles away. Some of us felt that more than others. <laughs> I came in looking forward to making friends, playing sports, and of course growing in my knowledge of the Bible and my relationship with the Lord, all of which happened over these four years, which is super cool. I made amazing friends. Friends who both laughed and cried with me. Friends who would prank my RAs with me. Friends who would go on lots of food runs. <laughs> friends who kept me accountable. And friends who pushed me closer to the Lord. What more could I ask for? I also loved playing sports. I came in freshman year knowing nothing about basketball. This, of course, resulted in me being a bench player, which I was completely fine with because I did not understand the sport. So my first game, around I have to share this I wasn't even nervous I didn't have any pregame nerves because I was like there's no way I'm playing in this game like it didn't even cross my mind so I was fine you know we start the game I'm cheering on my team I'm having a blast and uh, yeah it's just going great and then my coach leans over and he goes Nicole go in for her and I look back at him and I'm like are you sure you want me to do this <laughs> like do you remember practice yesterday <laughs> So I go in, and they pass me the ball. I shoot probably the ugliest shot, but I swish a three. 
And even though we were losing by 70 points, the stands went wild. <laughs> And then they picked me up and put me right back on the bench because I couldn't dribble a basketball. <laughs> the biggest lesson that God taught me over these years is his faithfulness. Growing up, I was always taught how God was faithful. However, I was able to experience it personally. All throughout these years, I did experience multiple challenges, some of them being intense health issues in my family and even in my own life my sophomore year. They were tough. I couldn't understand why God would allow these things to happen. Through the middle of my sophomore year, I was doing my devotions in Psalm 119, and I came across verse 71, which says, It is good that I was afflicted, that I might know your statutes. It made sense to me now. God allowed me to go through these things so that I might know him more. And to me, it was all worth it. That made it all worth it. From that moment on, I saw how faithful God had been to me. He carried me through each day. He never left me. I have been at Appalachian Bible College for approximately 853 days. 853 days God has been faithful to me. He will not stop now for me, for our class, or for any of you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, family and friends, for coming out to support the class of 2023. It means so much to all of us to have each and every one of you here with us today. Thank you as well to the staff and faculty here at ABC for your commitment to us students by praying for, educating, and leading us. You guys have had a tremendous impact on us, and many of you have been mentors and prayer warriors for us. You have also been an example to us of godly leadership and service. Your investment into our lives is so appreciated by all of us. I'm so thankful to have been able to be here at ABC and to experience Bible college life with these wonderful classmates who all have a heart for serving God. Even though I've only been on campus since sophomore year, I have so many great memories with everyone here, from going on Dunkin' Happy Hour runs each week being a part of the volleyball team, serving as a class officer this year with some of my classmates, and my favorite, of course, hustling from Bukema all the way up here to chapel three times a week as Dr. Reinhardt drives by in his empty 15-passenger van. <laughs> we have some great memories here at ABC. One of my favorite things about our class is that we all love to pick on each other and have a good time, but we can also be serious and get work done. We know that we can pick on and joke with each other because we all love each other and we know that we all like to joke around. It is so important to be able to have a good relationship with those whom you are serving. And our class has been like one big family. Sure, there have been times when we disagreed, but we're always able to come up to a loving agreement and to be able to serve God together effectively. We have spent the past four years here studying scripture and serving in many areas, and it is our hope that when you think of the class of 2023, you think of us as being steadfast in service. That is the motto of our class, and it is taken from our class verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, which says, therefore, my beloved brother, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Jonathan Brooks will focus on our entire class verse later. For now, I will focus on our motto, steadfast in service. The word steadfast means to be firmly fixed and unchanging. There are many things in life that are not steadfast or firmly fixed. For example, Duncan happy hour prices. <laughs> gas prices, pretty much all prices. 
But when we talk about being a steadfast servant, unchanging doesn't mean that you can never change your mind or that you can never change anything about yourself. Rather, a servant who is steadfast is unchanging in the sense that he or she is faithful, committed, and unwavering. The rocky days, trials, and persecutions are not going to cause the steadfast servant to stumble. This servant truly knows God and knows his steadfast love. His steadfast love, which caused him to send his only son, Jesus, to be born of a virgin, live a perfect, holy life, die a shameful death on the cross for man's sins, and rise again to give us hope and the gift of eternal life. It is the gospel which enables and motivates believers to be faithful, committed, and unwavering in service to our God. We will sing our class song, Complete in Thee, later in the program. However, I would like to make mention of one verse right now, which says, Complete in thee, no work of mine. May take, dear Lord, the place of thine. Thy blood hath pardon bought for me, and I am now complete in thee. The class of 2023 does not strive to be steadfast in service because we think that we can somehow earn salvation through serving. We are not complete because of our work for Christ. We are complete because of Christ's work in us. Christ's blood being shed on the cross is what made salvation possible. And because of that shed blood on the cross, we are able to have a relationship with our Savior and love him. Our love for our Savior moves us to serve him. There are many examples in scripture of steadfast servants. One of the most well-known examples is Paul. We know Paul as the man who wrote 13 letters in our New Testament. He witnessed to many people and was completely devoted to serving Christ when he got saved. However, there were consequences to his devotion and service. Paul was persecuted. He was beaten, imprisoned, and hated by so many. Second Corinthians tells us that he was often beaten so badly that he almost died. Five times he received 39 lashes from the Jews. Three times he was beaten with rods. He was stoned once and shipwrecked once. He was on the move many times and was in danger from rivers, robbers, Jews, Gentiles, and false believers. He was in danger in the city, in the wilderness, and on the sea. He had many sleepless nights and often went hungry and thirsty. But never does he say that serving God isn't worth it. Rather, he says that it is good that he suffers, because when he is weak, then the power of Christ dwells in him. Paul was a steadfast servant. I hope that no one in our class ever has to go through the pain and suffering that Paul experienced. However, if we do, it is worth it, and I pray that we would remain steadfast no matter the circumstance. I pray that no one in our class would shy away from serving Christ because there is a potential for suffering. Christ gives us strength. He is our strength, and it is a joy to suffer for his sake. That is why our motto is not steadfast in service when it is easy or comfortable or fun. Rather, it is steadfast in service, period. There is no qualifier for when being steadfast in service is appropriate, because it is appropriate and expected all the time, no matter the circumstance. During our four years here, we have heard many chapel messages from many different speakers. The themes during the years that we have been here were the servant's invincible heritage, serving God acceptably, servants under the yoke, and this year, servants who fear the Lord. There is a common theme to each of these chapel themes, servanthood. This makes sense because ABC's motto is because life is for service. Our class motto and the college's motto go right along with each other. We are steadfast in service because life is for service. As Dr. Anderson once said, the only reason I'm alive after I'm saved is to serve God. As the class of 2023 graduates tomorrow, each of us individually must begin to live out this motto that has described the heart of our class these past four years. There is no greater work in life than to serve God and bring glory to him. All the staff and faculty here at ABC have played a vital role in our education and preparing us for ministry. 
I would like to give a special thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Hammonds who have faithfully served as our class sponsors. They have been wonderful class sponsors, and I think I speak on behalf of our entire class when I say that we love them, and we are so thankful for all that they have done for us these past four years. The Hammonds have been so faithful in praying for each and every one of us. They have been such faithful prayer warriors during our time here as students, and I know that they will continue to pray for us as we graduate tomorrow and jump into real life. They have been amazing examples of what a steadfast servant looks like these past four years. Graduating tomorrow are the following majors. Two camping, one interdisciplinary, three biblical counseling, four pastoral, five elementary education, five music, five TESOL, and five missions. Our class has been blessed with a variety of skill sets, and each of us has been training for the past four or five years how to best use those skill sets to serve God. There are many ways in which our class has been given the opportunity to serve during our time here at ABC. We are all involved in a practical Christian service every semester. Some of our class served in churches where they helped with sound, technology, children's church, Awana, Venture Club, and more. Some served on the puppet team and the drama team, where they ministered to local churches. Others served in the local public schools where they tutored students who needed a little extra help. Some served in visitation ministries, evangelistic outreaches, nursing home visitation, and many other areas. The point is that every individual in our class has been serving in some form of ministry every week. Many individuals in our class have served God through music during their time here. Several have been involved in chorale, jubilate, gospel heralds, magnify, and chapel orchestra. Four of our classmates have diligently served in Christian schools this semester as they were doing their student teaching. Some of our men have preached in their churches during their years here at ABC. And four members of our class have faithfully served on the student council this year, and others have served on student council in previous years. A few have served as RAs, and many members of our class has also been faithful in holding weekly worship nights for the students. We can also be steadfast in service by doing our best in all that we do. Our class has been doing their best in our studying here at ABC. Many individuals in our class have consistently been on the president's list and the dean's list each semester. Many individuals in our class have also been involved in sports teams, and several times over the past four years, those teams were recognized as scholar teams by the NCCAA for maintaining an average GPA of 3.4 or higher. Our class also has a steadfast love of coffee. We have been steadfast in nagging many of our professors over the years to hold classes in the coffee shop. Those professors have also been steadfast in rejecting that request, <laughs> except maybe once or twice a semester. However, all that rejection never deterred us from asking again and again and again. <laughs> On a more serious note, when I think of how our class has been steadfast in service over the years, I also think of the faithfulness of the individuals in our class who have spouses and the few who have children. I think college is pretty difficult without having family responsibilities. However, there are many in our class who have steadfastly served the Lord while here at ABC and have been diligent in schoolwork while also supporting and raising a family. And I'm sure that is very difficult. But these classmates of ours love their Savior so much that even though it can be very difficult and exhausting sometimes, they know that it is worth it to remain steadfast. This past summer, most of us were responsible for doing internships for our majors. Our class served in at least eight different states and nine different countries, putting into practice what we had spent the first three years here learning to do. I know that everyone in our class had great experiences on the internships and learned many lessons about ministry. Our internships made us even more excited to be able to enter into some kind of ministry after graduation, whether it be full time or not. I cannot wait to see where God leads each individual in our class and the work that we will all do around the world because of Christ's working in us. Even though our class has such a heart for service, there will be times, believe it or not, when we do not feel like serving. Ministry can be hard, and serving can be hard. That is just the truth of the matter, and we lie to ourselves if we say that every day we wake up with a smile on our face ready to serve. 
However, God gives us the strength, not only on those difficult days, but every day to serve him. That is what the class of 2023 wants to be remembered for, allowing God to use each one of us to do his work and carry out his will so that we may say that we have been and always will be steadfast in service. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Guessing by Caho's face, I probably should say a little bit more. So, <laughs> Thank you, class of 2023, for allowing me to share a few moments with you guys. It has been a blessing to be here at ABC these last few years. I am truly grateful for the wonderful teachers who have poured into my life, the friendships I have made and will continue past my time at ABC, and the memories I have made with you. A special thank you to my mom, somewhere in the audience, uh, for her zeal for the Lord um, that helped me realize my need for salvation at age 12. 
Now, ABC is a great teaching uh, place. And some of these teaching moments uh, happen unintentionally. One of these unintentional moments happened in a class called homiletics. Now, if you don't know what homiletics is, it's OK. Neither did I. <laughs> it's basically public speaking, but on steroids. Um, talking to an audience is difficult. Um, but preaching has its own terror with it. Um, and it was my turn to give the sermon. Um, and I was very nervous. It would have helped if the student before me uh, had blew it. But he didn't. He did great. He said amen and sat down. It was my turn to preach. <sighs> my best friend, Stifler, uh, gave me a reassuring smile as if to say, everything will be all right. After all, what could go wrong? I began my sermon. Today, we will be in the book of Philemon. As I'm going through my sermon, I notice some of my peers um, starting to smile, which is a little concerning when you're preaching. <laughs> the audience, my peers, <laughs> kept smiling, and some of them almost laughing, and it was very concerning. Something was wrong. I finished my sermon and sat down, thinking nothing, have gone, nothing could possibly have gone any worse. Um, and I sat down beside my friend Stiff, and he leaned over, and I knew he was going to be reinsuring to me. So he leans over and whispers in my ear, bro, and I quote, your underwear is showing. <laughs> sure enough, my underwear was indeed showing. <clears throat> Apparently, in my panic, uh, instead of tucking everything into my pants, I tucked everything into my underwear. And there, I displayed it to my audience. <clears throat> I don't know the worst part of this story. The fact that my teacher uh, was the only one in the classroom not to take notice of this, or the fact that my sermon was recorded and is still floating around out there. <clears throat> now, these types of unexpected moments of teaching uh, have taught me to appreciate the people who have gone on before me uh, and have persevered through difficult times, and yes, I'm sure they had embarrassing moments as well, uh, but continue to serve God anyway. I've learned a lot here at ABC, like how to defend my faith, stand up for what I believe, and most importantly, to serve God by serving others. ABC has played a major part in calling me to the mission field, not overseas, but as in law enforcement here in the area. So pray for me as I continue and try to follow Christ's example, as I will be praying for you guys. ABC's motto will be forever ingrained in my heart, as I hope it is yours, for life is for service. Thank you. Love you guys. Hi, I'm Kaho. Um, as many of you know, I'm an international student from Japan um, who somehow ended up in this great state of West Virginia. <laughs> um, one word that describes my time here at ABC would be overwhelming. When I first came here as a freshman, I was overwhelmed by these, these tall Americans um, who were still strange to me. Um, not anymore. I was not as fluent in English at that time, and everything was very overwhelming. But it did not take much time for God's goodness and graciousness to overwhelm me. Living in another country was um, uh, humbling, and the language barrier was hard sometimes. But those things only made me rely on the Lord and his strength. I'm also overwhelmed by the gift of great eternal friendships that God gave me throughout the four years. Um, my country, Japan's Christian population, is below 1%. Um, and ABC felt like almost heaven to me. And now it's my second home. It is hard to leave a place like this, but our citizenship is in heaven. And I look forward to singing to our wonderful Savior with everyone around the throne, whether or not we see each other again on earth. I'm thankful that no matter where we will be in the world, we will be serving the same great God. 
But above all of these things, what was the most overwhelming to me about ABC was learning the richness of God's word. Through Bible classes and different circumstances, God taught me that he is enough. No matter what happens in life after graduation, we have God's word, which is absolutely trustworthy. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all these things, all things? This is one of the verses that I have meditated on for the last two years. God's words show me how sinful I am and how merciful the Lord is to forgive such a selfish, prideful, and ungrateful sinner like me. And that's overwhelming to know. I will forever cherish this precious time here where I was able to soak in God's word. God's goodness is truly overwhelming. Our next song is going to be on the screen in Christ alone. So if you would stand with me and sing. This is a day that four years ago, I thought I may never have reached. 
There were days when I couldn't wait for what is going to happen tomorrow. But now that it's here, the feeling is bittersweet. I felt called to be a pastor when I was 13 years old, and it was the clearest I've ever heard God speak in my life. I came to Appalachian Bible College with reserved excitement because I was concerned about leaving my family, adopting to all the dress and conduct rules, there was a few, and questioning, Lord, are you sure this is what you want me to do? Me, becoming a pastor. I remember my first read through of the school's rule book, The Servant Staff, ending very abruptly as I shook my head and said, nope, that's not for me. <laughs> we are told to live by faith and not by sight, and I can honestly say that I was doing that in this decision because I couldn't see what God was doing at the time. Now, four years later, with a few earned yellow infractions, to being the one writing those infractions, who would have thought? Countless hours of studying, learning oddly, under the godly professors here, many chapel services, new friendships, and a few three-pointers on a basketball court have prepared me to accept the Lord's calling on my life, to serve him with my life. This place has been really good to me. I have longed for this day. The spiritual environment that is found here at ABC has done so much in maturing me and providing me with the confidence that I must, as 1 Corinthians 15, 58, our class verse says, and I'm going to invite the class of 2023 to stand with me as we say this together for one last time. I'm going to start y'all with the first word, and then you're going to come in. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you, Hearing this class verse, every class chapel has allowed it to become more and more real in my life. It is applied directly to our lives. And I think it's a great verse, as Eileen noted earlier, that goes with our school's motto. Because life is for service. If I've learned anything in my years here, it would be that service to our Lord is the only thing that truly matters in our lives. We don't know how much time we have here and that should affect the way we live. This isn't our home. But when my time is up, I want to kneel at the feet of our Lord and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. My years of study here are marked forever by so many wonderful memories. The unique and unfortunate epidemic of COVID, things some generations never even thought of, and we experienced them together in four years. We didn't know when we would see each other again after we left after our freshman year. I will never forget the concerns of a simple cough, the temperature checks, and the fashionable masks, standing six feet apart from each other upon arrival for sophomore year. So many COVID tests. We have made countless friendships with one another over these years and have made memories that to believe, you just had to be there. We prepared for banquets, cheered loud at ball games, paid money to wear jeans for classes in chapel. Um, found new local churches to serve in, listened to the Lord's calling during conferences and responded accordingly, and watched a bunch of our classmates get married. Some of y'all were quicker than others. <laughs> on my first full day on campus, my roommate and I, running from McCarroll Hall to Pipkin, made it to the 8 a.m. Bible knowledge exam after waking up at 7.55 a.m. <laughs> no, I did not brush my teeth. I remember the first class I dropped in my freshman year as soon as I read the syllabus of the Old Testament survey. I remember looking at the class schedule and then I had to Google how many books were in the Old Testament. Something wasn't adding up. I remember contemplating how many these and thous I would say in my prayer before giving my sermon in the chapel during expository preaching week. My teammates and I on the basketball court got to play for an NIT national championship and came up just short. It's one that I think about quite a bit. I, get, I got to experience the good and the bad that comes from playing basketball here. My experiences range from being a three-time All-American and a three-point contest winner to experiencing impressive trash talk from opposing schools during away games. Just to name a few, I've been chased up and down the court by a large man playing the tuba, <laughs> a man screaming at me while in a Power Ranger suit, 
a Division I school's baseball team waiting for us and pounding on our bus upon arrival at their campus. And the entire crowd of community college yelling at me after I was dunked on. I am so thankful to say that I am a warrior for life. Our heritage is beyond special. I wouldn't have traded our teams for almost anything. <laughs> I will always cherish the bus rides with Coach Barton and the knowledge gained from our conversations. He'll never fully understand how much he means to me. To so many other stories that I will share with family and friends for the rest of my life, the relationships and friendships established here will always be invaluable. I want to take a second and thank all the staff and faculty for everything they do around here. It doesn't get talked about enough, the investment that they have made in the lives of servants around the world. You all could have done other things and even served God in maybe more beneficial ways on an earthly scale. Yet you answered the call, looked at the harvest, and saw the need. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hold on to that truth and continue to pass it on to the next generation. It will be so amazing to hear of all our connections because of this training ground that has prepared us all for a life of ministry. Think of the stories we'll share for eternity. We owe so much to you all. I'm reminded of a song written by Stephen Curtis Chapman, which starts as I look back on this road I've traveled. I see so many times he's carried me through. If there's one thing I've learned in my life, my Redeemer is faithful and true. Has God carried you through these years we've had here? You bet he has. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 summarizes the message Paul gives starting in verse 1 of the chapter, which says, Brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which is that Jesus died, was buried, and was risen from the dead three days later. He provides the details of how one is saved in the chapter and the proof and validity of its truth, ending with the victory Jesus Christ had over death, hell, and the grave. Guys, I've messed up so many times in my life. My mistakes have driven me into closer dependence upon God because of how much I need him. Class of 2023, never forget the gospel. We have nothing without it. We never come to school here without the gospel. Most of us don't meet each other without the gospel. There is no need for ministry without the gospel. This world has no hope apart from the gospel. We will fail in ministry if we do not remember the gospel. It puts everything into perspective for us. Jesus Christ looked upon the world and all of its wickedness and humbled himself to die on the cross for our sins when he didn't have to. If we repent and believe in him, we will spend eternity with him. Amen. Paul describes the process and the promise of our living eternally with him. His summary says, Therefore, referring back to all that he previously said, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We must be steadfast, strong, always showing up, being depended on to work or labor for the very sake of others to hear this gospel. Unmovable, planted, determined in our effort that we will not be deterred no matter what may come our way, always abounding, overwhelming, regardless of danger, doubt, disappointment, or uncertainty, that we will stand in the gap, knowing our labor will not be in vain, but will accomplish what God intended. I have to share a verse that has been so influential and encouraging in my life, and you've probably heard it from me if you've been around me longer than a few minutes. This work of the Lord is a difficult one. There will be challenges and trials and times when we wonder if this is even what we should be doing. John 16, 33. These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. This isn't our home, but it's where God has us for now. We still have work to do while we're here. While I feel inadequate to serve God because I know me, I can't say I haven't been prepared because this place has done that for us. We are here until the work God has for us is done. We are waiting for the day when Jesus comes to take us home. What a day that'll be. All of us together. Live with that perspective. It's worth it. In my time here, I've learned many things and been reminded of more. I've learned that God is good even when life seems like it isn't. 
I've learned that believers must guard their hearts. I've learned to value godly friendships because they can push you closer to God. I've learned that things don't always go according to our plan, but God's plan is perfect. I've been reminded that I'm not perfect, but I serve a God who is. I'm going to miss this place, but even more so miss all of you more than you know. It's the end of a major chapter of our lives. So many great memories and lessons that we will take with us into eternity. We're going to go our separate ways, and we may never see each other again here on earth. But then I snap out of it, and I think, I won't miss you too much. We're going to spend eternity together. (laughs) I'm soon to be leaving here and stepping out in faith that God will prepare me for what comes next. He's going to lead, and we're going to follow. We must be about our Father's business. So, class of 2023, what is life truly about? I have gotten to the end of Bible college, and the thing that I've learned the most is that there's still so much I don't know. We all leave here knowing for certain that one thing is for true, though, because life is for service. I'd like to invite class of 2023 to stand up as we sing our class song, Complete in Me. If you guys would like to turn and face the audience, thank you.
Good afternoon, my name is Alex Eichhorn, on, and on behalf of the class of 2023, I would just like to say thank you for joining us for our senior class program. It's meant a lot to see all of your uh, faces that are so familiar to us and joining us uh, in the celebrating occasion. At this time, we would like to uh, invite the senior class sponsors, the Hammonds, to join us here on stage. Our class sponsors are staff or faculty couples that help facilitate class meetings and keep us in constant communication about different events and activities that occur throughout the year. The Hammonds have truly demonstrated godly leadership and have gone above and beyond expectations. And so, Mr. and Mrs. Hammonds, the senior class would like to express our deepest gratitude for your faithful service to all of us over these four years with a gift of appreciation. At this time, we would also like to invite Dr. Anderson to join me on the stage. As is a customary for each graduating class, they are, they are tasked to present the college with a gift to help contribute to the campus in some way, shape, or form. And so Dr. A, it is my privilege that on behalf of the class of 2023, we present to Appalachian Bible College the funds necessary to make updates to the Gilmore Gymnasium. These updates will include improvements to the Warrior logo in the lobby area. And so we as a class give all the glory and honor to God in the provision of this gift. Thank you. I want to say, class, first off, thank you for blessing our hearts today through your service and just your preparation for that. I do have one little uh, sort of bone to pick with Eileen. I was never asked in my class to have the sh my, it in the coffee shop. I don't know why that is. Because I'd have been the one teacher that would have said yes. I want you to know. If you believe that, you're not graduating tomorrow. And for you that are guests, that's an inside joke. You'll just have to ask your particular graduate as to what that's about. I thank you for this reference and particularly the opportunity that we're going to have to now place a very meaningful logo uh, decal in the entrance area of the gym, Lord willing, Gilmore Center. And uh, I hope that that will be both a, a blessing to you as a class to know as you come back and observe that, to see what you've done by way of part of our uh, ministry here. But I hope that etched on your hearts will be a logo of a warrior that's far more important than our ABC warriors. We've heard references last couple of days about being a warrior. And I do know this, our task is to be faithful soldiers of Jesus Christ. Warriors that truly are steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And so may God help you to just be those kinds of warriors. And thank you for blessing our campus with this gift. And it will be a token of your contribution of life and even kindness to us. God bless you. And if you come back for classes, we'll meet in the coffee shop. On, be, <clears throat> excuse me, on behalf of my wife and I, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your kindness and graciousness in the uh, gift, sponsor gift there. And to the parents and friends of each and every one of our graduates, thank you for the privilege of ministering to your young people. Uh, just thank you that you've entrusted us with that responsibility. So let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to come before you, give you thanks for 
all that has transpired in these past four years. The challenges of <clears throat> coronavirus, distant learning, distant uh, teaching the classrooms, being separated by feet, and then the norm, the norm, <clears throat> excuse me, the normacy of our junior and senior year of normal classrooms and such. But we thank you for uh, this time. We thank you for our speakers. We thank you for the challenges that came from John and uh, 14 and the book of Proverbs. We thank you for them. And we pray that the Spirit of God will take what we've heard from each one and Lord, that the Holy Spirit would use it and apply it to our hearts as our classmates or as our graduates will be heading out from here. Lord, we specifically pray that our grades would be humble, they would be disciplined and Christ-like in the coming years in their ministries. We thank you for their preparation for ministry while they were here at ABC. And then as they go out from here, Lord, our graduates will be involved in serving their communities, camp ministries. Some will be heading overseas. Some will be moving into various pastoral ministries and future seminary. Our teachers from the LA program will be looking forward to teaching in the fall. And it's our prayer that each and every one would stay focused upon the Lord Jesus Christ and serve him with a joyful heart in all that they do and say. And if they would, permit me to conclude with 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. For it's in your precious holy name we pray. Amen.